Hello and welcome to this video how to create a custom service task with Flowable. I'm Valentin Zigner and I'm going to walk you through how you can create a simple backend service task in Flowable and expose that to your Flowable design palette. Therefore, I'm going to use a simple example which is calculating A plus B. Obviously, when you would like to do the calculation A plus B, you can just use a uh, backend expression or even frontend expression for that. However, um, I'm just using that to illustrate you the capabilities of Flowable to implement or expose your business functionality to your um, modeler. So let's get started. And therefore, we will start actually in Flowable Design and just model that uh, with a backend expression so that we are able to see what we would like to do. So here on the left side, uh, we have uh, our start event and we are going to model now a simple process based on that uh, start event, which is going to do our calculation. I'm creating a first and for uh, form for our input data. Now I'm going to add two fields, one called A, the next one called B. And those are the um, main two fields which we are having. And now we would like to have a service task and that service task is just calculating A plus B and writing that as a result variable to the field C. Now that is A plus B here. And whenever we execute that now, we see basically then in flowable work that we have here the possibility to enter 20, 22. And uh, once that is done, we can then say here and inspect, okay, the result is C, which is actually 42. So that is already sufficient to do the actual calculation. However, in the next step, we would like to have our own element here on the left side, which is doing that calculation for us. Therefore, we are going uh, to our customization project. And in this customization project, we can go ahead and create our own palette. That is part of our design. Therefore, you don't necessarily need a customization project. You can also just add this file on your class path and it's automatically picked up during startup. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder inside the resource directory and call, call that com slash flowable slash config slash custom slash palette. That's the folder in which flowable expects us to provide custom palettes. And I will create a new file called um, math.custom.palette.json. Files need to end either with uh, .palette or .palette.json. And we have in here a JSON document containing all the elements. Now by default, you won't have any auto completion. However, there's a, a JSON schema which we can use. Therefore, we need to go to the documentation. And in the documentation, you can simply search for flowable JSON schemas. And in there, we have the um, palette definition schema. And that schema we can use to um, create our uh, palette file. Now, I just add here a new JSON schema and call it global palette. And for now, it's just for this specific file. And as soon as I have done that, I have different attributes available over here, including the palette ID, which I call math custom, the palettes we would like to patch. So there we can specify the different palettes we would like to patch. For me, that is going to be the process palette and the case palette. When you would like to patch the uh, form or page palette, then you need to do a front end customization. Please check out there for our documentation and uh, videos as well. Now um, we can add multiple things here and one is groups and the groups allow us basically to specify um, different categories here on the left side. So quick draw is a group, start events is a group, activities is a group and so on. And then we have the stencils which are actually those elements inside the group. Now let's call that group math. And in that group math, uh, we need to specify the index in which we would like to have it. I'm going for 300. The default elements are there in steps of 100 as well. So that is somewhere at the top, but not 
uh, exactly at the top and then we can start with stencils. Now our first stencil um, is going to be the addition service task and that's actually also the only stencil for this video but please feel free to add more stencils to your palette file as well. Now that extends the service task and you can actually find um, the existing um, stencils inside um, the core process palette, which is inside the flowable bliss palettes package. So that has the ID service task and all the predefined attributes which are there. Now we need to add this to a group as well. So here we can say this is supposed to be in our math group. And then we can start putting in properties uh, to that list. So we can now define here that we would like to have our input A field. Uh, which is from the type uh, integer, for example, um, that is one time two, which means we also allow expressions. Um, we can say it's in the category idoas, which is in the current global version, the details category. And we also can say that it is optional false, which makes it a mandatory field. Now the same we are going to do now for our input B field. And then we also add another field which we call output. That is basically the name of our output variable that has the type simple text. And we have then here uh, one time false actually. Category is also idoas. And um, it's also mandatory, so let's make optional also false. We can now also add an uh, index property, and the index tells us uh, at which position which of those elements are. So with that, we would now have first input A, then input B, then input C. And uh, as a next step, we can also configure the predefined elements. So since we extended the service task, by default, we have all of those different properties here. Now for our calculation A plus B, that doesn't make really sense to also specify expression, delegate expression, and so on. So we can start with pre-filling those fields. For example, the field delegate expression, we would like to have with the content um, um, math A plus B. Now in here, we put the name of a spring bean. That spring bean we still need to implement. And we can go ahead and uh, specify now that this should not be visible, so visible is false. Same we are actually doing with the other elements which are in there. I just took a shortcut in here and added basically all of them out of the box. Now expression should be visible, false, class fields, and so on. All of them we wouldn't like to have visible. There's one thing which is missing now uh, to basically make it nice. Actually two things, the icons, those I am going to skip. They, uh, those you could specify with icon and big icon over here. Uh, I'm going with uh, a resource bundle now for having translation. There you need to specify uh, the place where your resource file is. So your translation file. And um, in that you basically then have uh, all the different um, translations. That file typically ends with prop dot properties, but you don't specify inside resource bundle the dot properties. Now uh, we need to translate different things, and one of them is our group math uh, title, which is uh, basically the title of our group. Another thing is the ID of our stencil. So there we can say this is um, a addition task. And then we also would like to specify translation for our properties which we have. So those three different properties we would like to translate um, to a more nice name. Now let's just say we have an uppercase letter at the beginning. And we would like to have yeah, the last letter also uppercase. And once I restart now global design, we should already see um, that this palette is exposed and it's available to us 
with all the different elements we have specified in here. Now the part which is missing and that we will see then soon once we execute this is our actual math A plus B implementation. But first let's check that out in global design. I'm going to refresh the page here and when I'm lucky we see that we have here math activities with our addition task and that has our different fields here. We can press the blizzard here next to it which allows us to specify rather a number uh, directly the field and we can then also specify the output C in here. Now when I go ahead and save that and publish it and now we execute my task. So let's just say we create a new one which is A plus B, 10 plus 20 and submit that we see we have an error message and the reason therefore is actually simple and we see that here in the log file cannot resolve identifier math A plus B. So as a next step we need to look that our global work application is able to resolve math A plus B. So I'm going to create here a new uh, class let's call it math A plus B task and in that class I'm going to extend the abstract platform task and I'm uh, annotating that with add component which exposed it, as, uh, exposed it as a spring bean. So with that I basically can give it a name and with that is Flowable is able to look it up. Now let's have an execute task in here and that's the default method basically and we can now um, execute that code once that specific uh, method or the specific task is called. Here I can access the extension elements and the extension elements are basically the elements which I have defined as properties on my palette. And I have here the input A which basically then um, takes the extension elements container to look it up what the expression is and the variable container to resolve that expression and then eventually also my default value to basically get my input A and same I'm going to do for my input B which basically is then this one and now I can simply um, calculate my result which is um, just input A plus input B. Last but not least, I also need to store my result and therefore I can use uh, the output which I have configured. Uh, same actually here, extension element and variable container and uh, default value. And that is going to be the, my output variable name. This is now a string and not an object. And with that, we can now use the variable container to set the variable. Uh, output variable name to the value result. As a next step I need to restart my work application to make this task really available to my flowable engine. Now what we are doing in here just as a summary we are getting the values from our palette for those three different fields and those values are actually the expressions which we have over here. So when we go back here uh, in design we have here A and B as an expression and C just a plain text. Now the A and B is then resolved with the variable container to the actual value from A and B. So that allows us to directly receive the number which we have entered and in input A and input B we will just have two numbers which we can sum up and then set as a new variable with the result of our output variable name we are having over here. So let's try that out. Therefore we go back to the work application, just refresh the page and let's say we calculate this time 22 plus 20 and submit that. We see now we have as a result here 42 again. And with that I already reached the end of this small video how to. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to also check out our other videos over here and see you next time.